Listen, whenever I don't like a movie, but it comes from a director that I really highly respect, I always give them the benefit of the doubt and go watch it again in case I miss something, something that changes my mind. Maybe it's something that I wasn't focusing on that I didn't see the first time. I, I aim to see what they were going for since they've made masterpieces in the past. And nah. I'm not saying this is a coaster movie or anything, but look, after watching it twice, I, I can say that it's not for me. I know plenty of people who love it and I'm praying for them, but I get that it's all about the experience. You know, Luca wasn't so much focused on these crazy overarching themes, but he was skirting on the idea of it being more of a reactionary tale. And I can respect that. Sometimes you like getting on the raging bull. Other times you regret getting on the giant drop. Let me explain. So in case you caught Suspiria but missed Hereditary earlier this year, I'm just going to remind you that that movie is incredible and you should definitely catch it. And it's not even because it has a more straightforward narrative, you know. I love the experience of watching movies like Mother, El Topo, Enemy, Stalker. So maybe I just like those rides a bit more, but Suspiria is six acts, an epilogue, and an after credit scene too long for me. So in the mythology of the original trilogy, we see that there's these three witch sisters and they're deathly hollows each one takes residence in a particular part of the world and they kind of hold this competition towards each other to see who can spread death and destruction the most now i don't know how much of the original lore luca carries with him he already did recast the main actress from the first to play a sort of force ghost but he's also kind of taking the annihilation route of basing it more on emotions and not the actual mythos of the original story it was an adaptation which was a memory of the book so instead of going back and rereading it and underlining passages i did an adaptation from my experience of having read it without going back to the book and um uh, I thought that that was a way to be faithful to the thing that I experienced most strongly, what, which was its dreamlike nature. So in Lucas, we see a school of witches who run a dance academy as a front to find new hosts for their mother Marcos. They pretty much do this dance ritual that preps a young woman's body so that Marcos can take it over Hocus Pocus style. But the big twist is that Marcos has been pretending to be Mother Suspiria, when in reality she's just as job of the hut looking thing the problem is that no one's watching lme in this universe so they ain't listening chloe grace moret's character escapes and this dude just dismisses everything she has to say mia goth escapes with the damn weapon and he's like oh look hooky so when Susie comes in as a fresh face they automatically want to make her do this oa dance so that they can commence the ritual but boy are they surprised when they realize she's the real suspiria <laughs> I don't think she was Mother Suspiria the entire time because then all of Susie's flashbacks and nightmares would <laughs> make absolutely no sense. So I see it as Mother Suspiria using her in order to get things straight. I don't know at what point she came in to be able to take over the Academy, but at some point she took over her body more than Mr. Grey did. So in the bloodiest scene of the movie, she straight kills everyone. All of these fraud witches is able to put down these two so they can rest and sets order back in the way she wanted it. What I think is interesting is how this movie is so long, yet at one point they were actually going to make this Suspiria part one before they Infinity War that title. So considering that this movie does have an after credit scene, he may be wanting to make a sequel. The original did have three parts so he could expand the story with the other witches. Luca's already on the franchise train with this other one. That's probably why Tilda Swinton played three parts so that she could get a chance to come back. Obviously the character of Marcos is dead so she can't be that one. Maybe she could be Blanc or maybe she's Lutz Eb Ebersdorf. Bro, these people legit made up an IMDb for an actor that's a character of another actor pretending to be one. And while I think that's hilarious, I don't get why she ordered a prosthetic penis for this role. I love Tilda Swinton. Her and Kate Blanchett are chameleons, and I, I still have trouble figuring out who's the better actor of this generation. But Tilda looked like the Six Flags guy in this movie. She had those bad grandpa moves going on. Girls sounded like Channing Tatum in 22. My name is Jeff. You are living with dangerous people. What happens to her... It's what she has made us believe it happening to her. There is no wires, no nothing, no, no, no CGI. I am absolutely calling bull on this one. Luca, if there was no CGI in that scene and that lady did all that, I am putting out an Amber Alert for this actress because I'm pretty sure she's dead. Now, like I said, this movie is supposed to be an experience, and I would give Radiohead's score a 5 out of 5 for that. I would give these two scenes a 5 out of 5 for that, but there's still like two hours left in this movie, and... It's just not for me. Sure, I know people are quick to call you an anti-intellectual if you don't like art house films, but if the director says the main focus is a feeling, then, you know, it would be pretentious to say that. You'd be foolish. It would be as dumb as cutting out bits of a video in order to build a narrative for clout. 
and then literally repeating the exact bits you cut out. It'd be super cringy to tell others that there's only one way to watch a movie, but I still love the little theory debates, right? They're always super interesting. There's a theme of motherhood, especially when it comes to Blanc, who at one point resisted the person who she was supposed to be serving because of her affection towards Susie. We all know our mothers have favorites. If you don't know how it is, then I hate to break it to you. I don't know how I see the coming of age side of it, which a lot of people have seen, considering that the uh, twist at the end kind of contradicts that. There's even the men metaphor in where they kind of look at power, and you definitely see that with the era and the news articles and reports that are out there. But there's a specific point in where a lot of people look at the man having to be a witness for the ritual, paralleling how many women's allegations get dismissed unless there is a man there to verify it. And I think that's a great great point. I can definitely see that as being a powerful statement in the movie that I would 100% agree with, except they don't really fit in the movie, because the people running that ceremony were actually liars. That's part of the reason why Susie Etter erases mine. But when it comes to the big push that Luca has been talking about, about wanting to use this movie to empower women, I personally don't think of a coven of bloodthirsty witches when I think of the powerful women I know, but I get the parallels that witch mythology has always had with those themes. It's just, how many of y'all know about this lawsuit? The one that left Luca going, call me by my lawyer. You know, when I first read up on this, I thought it was ridiculous that someone was trying to claim certain shots. Like, imagine if the person who created the over-the-shoulder shot got away with copywriting, then we'd all be screwed. But the more I looked into it, this claim made a bigger splash than I thought. Not only were there a bunch of shots presented in the first trailer that were literally direct ripoffs from certain artists, but even for those who pretend that they have to squint because they don't see it, bruh. My man name dropped these artists as inspiration, and I guess when he didn't get the sign off to use their stuff, he just said, I'm gonna take it anyway. Obviously, they settled out of court and re edited it out of the movie, but like, it's kind of crazy. For those of you wanting to call other people anti intellectuals for not adoring this feminist indie movie, at least I know how to respect intellectual properties, but if the movie hits the emotions that people are looking for, then that's all that matters. Who cares if it doesn't work for me? I know that I can recommend Enemy to a lot of people subliminally, but I know it's not going to have the same effect for everyone the same way it does for me. So for Luca, if he wanted to recreate the same emotions of dread, then that's exactly what he got, and a lot of people love that. But if we want to talk about a strong female empowering movie with a bunch of violence, Y'all should go watch Widows. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Um, like I said, maybe I'm just a cartoon. Maybe I don't understand these things. Maybe I listen to interviews and am able to get everything the, uh, the, the director wanted, but maybe because I didn't look too much into it and made up stuff, then it's not there. Like I said, maybe this works for you. I know that a lot of people watch uh, the Let Me Explain videos. Like, I like Bohemian Rhapsody when I made that video. That's like how I start and it's the middle of the video and people still got very triggered so i could definitely see that being here but i'm curious to know whether it worked for you was it the emotion of it did you like the ride what was your favorite scene are you actually gonna look over it again i have a poster i'm trying to get rid of this poster that the press sent me uh it was like the the studio had sent me this thing is creepy as can be so i don't know maybe i'll see one of y'all in chicago or river east give it to you i'll just leave it there because I've been hearing noises ever since I got it. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section, the theories, anything dealing with this movie down below. And until next time, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, or...